my professor was trying to pull me in the accounting direction. Okay. Which, um, him and I have a great relationship still. Yeah. And, uh, he, he was, he was the first professor in the college of business to be like welcoming to me. Okay. And that was really, that was beneficial. Well, let's give this professor a shout out. Welcome to Econ with Dr. A, where we break down economics and business topics to empower your life. I'm Dr. A, your guide on this journey. Join me in explaining the insights that matter, helping you make informed decisions for a better personal and financial future. Let's get started. Welcome to Economics with Dr. A. I'm excited today for today's conversation. I am having a conversation with Hale fellow um, James Blazina. James, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm great. I'm great. One thing that I love about working with you, James, is you have this ability of breaking the ice and the awkwardness of first-time connections, right? Do you know you have that ability? I've been told that. I've been told I bulldoze the awkward, so. Okay. Yeah. How did you develop that skill, or was it an innate skill that you had? Um. I think the first time I really like was aware of it or was told that I, I really had it was when I was working at UPS as a supervisor, I'd have to train people mm -hmm. and we'd be in a 55 foot long trailer for six hours, just sitting there with a new person. And you know, that was a little awkward. You're yeah. trying to teach them and they were just kind of standing there like, I don't know what to do. And you just kind of, I just started asking questions and eventually we got to something they liked and yeah. we just talked about it. So I just had to, if you will, bulldoze the awkward. So, gotcha. yeah. Gotcha. Well, well, it's come in really handy this semester because um, your one of your main responsibilities was being a TA mm -hmm. for the principles of macro class. Mm -hmm. And one thing that we changed this year is principles of macro is a first semester, first year class now. Yeah. And students coming in were intimidated to talk to the professor. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But you created, and because of the environment that you created from now on, I'm going to make sure I have a TA in that class, but you create an environment that students felt comfortable coming to you mm -hmm. before they came to me. So one, thank you for creating that sense of belonging. What did you do to create that community vibe? Can you pinpoint? I don't really know. Okay. Uh, to be honest, I think probably the, the most specific thing I can target in this is Kind of just asking them about themselves just before class or be like, oh, what do you do or yeah. what do you like to do? And, you know, with Carrie, it was cheerleading. With mm -hmm. Luke, it was just whatever we were talking about at the moment yeah. and strike up a conversation. Um, with Keisha and Kaya, same with Luke. We just talked about whatever, music yeah. or, yeah. Well, you did a great job. And this is something that I talk to economic educators often about is genuine sending the signal that you genuinely care. Yeah. It's simple as that. Mm -hmm. Just really caring about the students and, and thank you for all your efforts in creating that environment. One of the main things that I want to talk to you about, in addition to your Hale Fellows experience, mm -hmm. um, is something that a lot of college students struggle with. And I was one of those college students and it's the thing that you and I have in common. You did not start off your academic career as an econ major. Is that no, correct? No, I, I did not. Okay. So. <laughs> so this topic of switching major, how do you decide on switching majors? What are the causes uh, that might uh, force you to change your major are things that students are often asking me about. So can you tell us your personal story? How, when did you switch to economics? Yeah. And why? Okay. So a um, little backstory here. Graduated from high school, decided I wanted to go into environmental science, mm -hmm. which, <clears throat> you know, be a fishing game officer, environmental conservation, stuff like that. Okay. Stop. Where did that interest come from? Because I have never heard that interest before. So oh. how does, not from you, but from like 
where do you, does where does one develop the interest of going into that career? Yeah. Um, so I don't know where really I, I'd say where it developed is I just I always like to be fishing. Mm -hmm. I like to be outdoors, especially in high school and that summer going to college. I think I was I would get off of work. I worked at like Cengage making mm -hmm. books. Okay. And right after that, me and my buddy would meet up after work. He also worked there as well. And we would go fishing or playing Frisbee golf, one of the two of them. Mm -hmm. So we would, we probably spent at least 20 hours every week, like Monday to Friday, every yeah. week fishing, just hanging out, gotcha. casting a line, doing whatever, just talking. And, um, even prior to that, the summer before that and the year before that, that's pretty much all we did. We just hung out and we didn't have anything to do. Well, we're going fishing. Yeah. Yep. So um, I I guess I it's where I felt comfortable. And you all, you and Becca had brought up like the third place. Mm -hmm. And for a while, that was my, that was definitely my third place just yeah. on the lake. So. so for all of those listening, third place is... First place is where you live, your yep. home. Second place is work. And third place is the place that you go to recover from the first two places. Yeah. And, and the idea is a third place. Everybody needs a third place. And if you don't have a third place, supposedly that uh, impacts your overall sense of well-being. Yeah. So your third place was the outdoors. Yes. It still is, though, right? Yeah. It, I mean, yes. Outdoor and outdoor adjacent places. So. Okay. Yeah. So you realize at a young age that the outdoors is your third place. Yeah. And then you say, I'm going to make this a career? Yes. Okay. And so you go into? Environmental science. Okay. And everything is going well once you decide to make that decision? Yeah, everything was going well. Um, literally the first semester of college, I went into it with the idea of like, hey, I'm here to graduate mm -hmm. and get a degree and make the best impact I can. But I'm also not going to – you're going to lose something if you shoot for 100 in every class. And yeah. it's, it's going to be that social aspect. And I never, like, had any desire to jo join a fraternity or anything. But um, I found my group of people, if you will, at yeah. the uh, rock, cl rock climbing wall, which was a way different type of person than who I am. So that was kind of weird, but it kind of mm -hmm. worked out. So um, – First semester didn't study at all. Got fine grades. They were they were good. Yeah. But uh, second semester did the same thing. Grades are fine. Mm -hmm. Skipped a few classes. First semester I didn't skip any classes. Uh, third semester, I realized what I was getting into. I was like, I don't quite like this. Okay. And I don't like the. I'm not enjoying the work I'm having to put into it. Okay. So I still wasn't like studying all the time, but mm -hmm. I, uh, I think I, I failed my first class that semester mm -hmm. and it was chemistry, which it was Kim 210 or I, whatever the basic chemistry is gotcha. for uh, chemistry and biology majors. So it was supposed to be a difficult class and I got a difficult professor and I, the way the class was set up, I just didn't manage my time right. And wasn't able to, it was like self-paced, but in person, it was weird. Okay. But um, I should have passed because I knew what I was doing. I ended up with like a 98 in the lab. Mm -hmm. So I, I knew what I was doing practically, but I yeah. didn't, I wasn't investing the right amount of time and that into it out of the classroom. Mm -hmm. And then the spring of, would that be 2020 at that point? That would be 2020. Okay. Uh, COVID, COVID hit, yeah, and um, we got sent away for uh, spring break. And last day of spring break, they're like, "We're having spring break an extra week, and when we come back, everything's gonna be online." Yeah, and we're like, "Well, that's not ideal, but okay." And I kind of just checked out. I filled yeah. every single class I had, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, okay. I I decided to take a year off school. Okay, yeah. So you took a year off. Things were not, you had lost your sense of purpose a bit. Yes. So you were no longer interested in the major. Mm -hmm. So, and, and we saw a lot of that 
happened during that time. Oh, for sure, yeah. People became disengaged, and obviously life was hectic for a lot of people. Uh, but a lot of people did not come back in that situation. Yeah. What made you come back to school? Um, so I worked at UPS for a year, and I was package handler the first 90 days. On my 90th day, I got promoted to a uh, part-time supervisor. And, you know, I was just like, I, I have no intent of doing this for the rest of my life. So, yeah. Yeah. I saw the way that other people got treated, mm -hmm. like as package handlers, and I got treated as a package handler. And then I saw the way that the upper management treated the part-time supervisors. Yeah. And it wasn't because they were trying to, they were actually sheltering us from a lot of the garbage that was happening up the chain of command. Mm -hmm. And the full-time supervisors really would get it handed to them pretty, pretty regularly from what I yeah. was able to see. Um, and I was like, I don't, I don't want that in my life. Yeah. So, so it, it's a work environment that a lot of people thrive in and mm -hmm. they love and they do well in, but you notice it's not what you want to do for quote unquote, the rest of your life. Yeah. So go back to school. Yeah. Go back to school. Do you come back to the same major? No. Okay. I went back to a marketing major. Okay. So walk me through that because I have a lot of students that are evaluating, should I change my major? And it's, there, there's this sunk cost fallacy that exists. Mm -hmm. People are like, I've already spent a year and a half or Sometimes it's not even sunk class fallacies, social pressures and identity. I've told the rest of the world that I'm an environmental science major. Yeah. How do I switch now without seeming like I'm losing credibility? Did, did that go through your mind? Yeah, but I, I don't think that's the, um, the problem that we're seeing, to be honest. I've been thinking about this a lot okay. um, lately. And I think the big problem with why people don't want to switch their major is they don't want to be a beginner again. Oh, I never thought of it that way. Yeah, so a lot of people think that there is a sunk cost fallacy, and that's part of not wanting to be a beginner again because mm -hmm. you're already like working your way up in one direction. You have to come yeah. back down. But I think I don't think it's losing that that's the scariest part. I think it's starting from the bottom again mm -hmm. and not knowing anything. Okay, so, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, somewhere going from somewhere where you have Semi credibility, mm -hmm. at least among your peers, like yeah. to a whole new environment, a whole new building. If you're yeah. on college campuses, whole new set of individuals that you have to start building relationships with again. Yeah, and um, it's like going to the gym or anything. It's like the hardest part of going to the gym is getting there. Going to the gym and that uh, that initial awkwardness. Yeah, of I mean, in. you go in and you kind of like swipe your badge or if it's yeah. your very first time, you're like, I don't do I have do? a gym membership. Yeah. What do I do? Yeah. And yeah. So you overcome that pressure of the awkwardness and you mm -hmm. say, I'm going to pick marketing. I did. And this is now spring of 21. Fall of 21. Fall of, oh, that's right, because yeah, you took fall. a year off. All right, mm -hmm. fall of 21. Yep. Um, what, why do you pick marketing? Uh, I was in between that or business management, mm -hmm. and marketing just sounded more entertaining to me. Okay. So I was like, we're going to shoot for this, and okay. we'll figure it out here. Okay. So, yeah. So fall of 21, you're a marketing major. Mm -hmm. When do you add econ or switch to econ? Um, so let me back up. I had I had had my mind set on marketing, mm -hmm. but I had not switched from an environmental science major that fall. Okay, so, so it was a mental. Switch, it was a mental not switch, a legal yeah. or not mm -hmm. a, a university systems mm -hmm. switch. Okay, yeah. Thanks for clarifying. So I um I couldn't declare as a college of business student with the GPA that I had at mm -hmm. the time because I had failed all those classes. Okay, going or. I guess going into COVID, right? Okay. So I was like, well, I guess I'm stuck in, yeah, you know, environmental science right now, but I'm going to be taking all business courses. So, okay. yeah. So you made the switch without formalizing it. GPA was a barrier. Yeah. We'll talk about that some more because 
I've got feelings about GPAs. I think we both do, but yeah. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Yeah. So when you officially become a marketing major, what happens next? Uh, So I went through that semester and I had a marketing course and then I had accounting, uh, financial accounting, which that was a blast. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed that way more than I thought I was ever going to. Nice. So I was like, oh, well, maybe maybe accounting eventually. I don't know yet. Mm-hmm. And my professor was trying to pull me in the accounting direction, Okay, which um, him and I have a great relationship still. Yeah. And uh, he he was he was the first professor in the College of Business to be like welcoming to me. OK. And that was really that was beneficial. Well, let's give this professor a shout out. Who's oh, this professor? oh, this is Bob Russ. Bob Russ. Not Bob Ross. Bob Russ. Yeah. Bob He's Russ. great. And uh uh, I, yeah. I love Bob Russ. He does a great job, and he's definitely student-centered. So mm-hmm. everything that you're saying resonates with um, how I would describe him as well. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so you're starting to feel welcome at the yeah. Hale College of Business. Starting to feel okay about it. Okay. And uh, we hadn't, uh, like, the holiday season, Christmas, come back in the spring, mm-hmm. and uh, it's January, and I have you in class. Principles of Macroeconomics. Yeah. So I, um, I had a meeting with an advisor going into, uh, the fall or coming, coming into the spring. So yeah. like November ish. And it was Chris, mm-hmm. Chris Bukas. And another he is, shout out. yes, another shout out, shout yeah. out. He's great. Um, and he was like, so what do you, what do you want to do? Like, what's your goal here? I was like, well, I want to switch to marketing. Mm-hmm. And he goes, okay, well, what, what do you want to do? I was like, I want to get out here as fast as possible. Okay. And so goes, that was your constraint. Yes. Right yes that was my constraint. I'm like, mm-hmm. I want to get out of here as quickly as I can with a piece of paper. Okay. And he was like, you know what? That's okay. I understand. He goes, mm-hmm. we're going to work through this and I'm going to try to help you get there the best I can. Mm-hmm. So he, he really was great. And, uh, him and Bob Russ were the first two people who, um, gave a crap about me. Okay. What or it felt like, it, it felt like it. Yeah. So that was really, that was really great. And that really helped me find my place here. But, um, switch to marketing or pre-marketing, if you will. Mm-hmm. And, um, what happened? I had you in class mm-hmm. and I think like a month in, I was like, this is great. Yeah. This is amazing. Um, and I understood economics. Mm hmm. It made sense to me. It was kind of how the lens through which I saw the world to begin with. So yeah. that was really nice to see. And uh, everything just clicked. Yeah. I asked way too many questions in your class. I loved, <laughs> I loved, loved having you in class because you do, you did exactly everything that I tell students that they should do. Take the content that you learn, see it in your everyday life, yeah. and come back with questions. Yeah. And... I, you, you only missed one class that semester. I did. And every class you had at least, I would say five questions ready. I did. And, and a lot of times you'd hold yourself back because you didn't want to be that guy that was asking all the questions. Yeah. But your colleagues did so much better because of the questions that you brought in. So I want to applaud you for, for that effort. And yeah, and that, that started your career into economics and yeah. your path towards being a Hale Fellow. Yeah. So remind me, you didn't do econ games that semester, right? No, I didn't. Okay. I didn't. You so, were kind of invited, but it was too early for yeah, you. Yeah, I was not quite ready. Um, I think I went to econ club twice before you guys actually went okay and i felt like that would be really weird to begin with yeah and also i was like i don't really know what's going on and i didn't understand that you can still succeed in the econ games with Mm -hmm. out any economics background gotcha so a little bit of what uh Becca and I talked about this, the imposter syndrome on our mm-hmm. podcast For about sure. uh, the hidden potential. Um, let's jump okay. a year a in year. advance. You become yes. a Hale Fellow. Hale Fellow. Um, why did you become a Hale Fellow? So I'll back this up a little bit. Sure. Uh, had you in class, 
Mm-hmm. I was in your office hours all the time. Mm-hmm. And we went into the fall yeah. or the summer. You got a new role. Yeah. And in the fall, I think I saw you like twice. Yes. And I felt really removed mm-hmm. from like the community as a whole. Yeah. Even though um, Mr. Goss was doing a great job mm-hmm. at leading the econ club. And I really enjoy what he's done with it. Yes. Um, and then going into the spring, started heading into the econ games and saw you more often. Because you had Eco 309. I did have Eco 309. Yeah. And I saw you, what, like three times, two, three times a week? At least twice a week. Yeah, at least yeah. twice a week. And um, I think your office hours were actually, I was available to swing by during that time too, which yeah. I wasn't in the ball. Yeah. So um, I was like, well, I definitely can learn more from Dr. A. And I feel like this is going to be good for me on the professional development sense as well. Mm-hmm. And I'm not really sure what we're going to do, but I'm sure it's going to be good and add value. So yeah. Why not? Why not? Right. Yeah. It's a job. Yeah. It's a job. Nobody will take me in an internship because of my GPA. Unfortunately. Yeah. So um, yeah. this is my best available option. Okay. So you start as a Hale fellow. Yeah. What was your first project? Do you remember? Uh, it was the ADR presentation. Yeah. So so tell the audience, how how did you get assigned this project? And how did you go about it? Like, what was the assignment? Remember, it was make a very new, neutral stance evaluation of the U.S. economy and the labor market uh, situation so that you're not going to either offend the union representatives, the corporate lawyers, or what was the other group? Uh, the HR. The arbitrators. The arbitrators. The arbitrators. Mm-hmm. So. There was a long list of terms that we were supposed to avoid, mm-hmm. which is good. Didn't want to fire anybody up. Yep. But um, Becca and I were just kind of told, here's the little data sets that were pulled off red. Have yeah. fun. And, Actually, uh, there was another challenge. There's no we, challenge. The challenge was we were going to do the presentation and tell the story in nine graphs. Oh, yeah. That's it. Nine yeah. graphs. I forgot about that. That's yeah. crazy. So you get that assignment, you and Becca. Mm-hmm. How do you, how do you approach that? Your first assignment, you're creating a presentation for me. What, were, yeah. what was going through? I'm. I expect that you had thoughts about possible failures. Well, I did. Okay. But you pretty much told us you can't fail okay. because there's nothing to fail on. It's just if if it's not what I want, we'll fix it, and that's okay. okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was great. Uh, I learned a lot from that presentation, actually. And we've used that presentation template. I'm actually going to use it tomorrow for my uh, seminar presentation. So can't wait to see that template seminar. has been very well used. Okay. Um, but yeah, I don't. I don't really know. We just kind of you're like make a graph with these, mm-hmm. and we're like okay. Yeah. So we made graphs, and there were definitely tweaks that needed to be made Slight. because. They didn't all look the same. And yeah. The, uh, it's okay. But it worked out. But our team gelled together through that project. For sure. And For sure. what I loved about you and Becca in that situation is you were thrown in the deep end. High stakes. We had an hour presentation mm-hmm. to 400 people. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And we, it was sink or swim. And we swam. Mm-hmm. So... Um, the, the feedback on that was really good. Yeah. Uh, we got invited to other presentations from there. Yeah. It put the Hale College of Business economics discussion into a new arena in our regional economy that is not usually had not usually tapped into our resources. Yeah. So um, thank you for that. Uh, you also go ahead. One other thing I want to mention. Yeah. Um, Becca and I both had unspoken reservations about working together going into this. Okay. So Becca alluded to this in her <laughs> in her interview. I didn't dig deeper. Tell me what were the reservations between the two of you? So we'd only really had one interaction that was more than just, hey, hi, how are yeah. you? 
and it was um, it was a little not. We were definitely on opposite ends of the opinion. Okay, and it was a uh, a little tense. Okay, and um, besides that, it was really just like casual. Yeah, conversations. We didn't really have a friendship going into this. You guys I didn't know how well. we were going to uh, work together. And yeah, yeah. How would you say your relationship is today? Oh, it's great. It's great. Yeah. Would Would you all have been friends had this fellow program not partnered you? Oh all? no 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 no. We would not have. So, okay. so so another positive outcome of this program is it increases uh, your willingness to work with other people actually maybe not willingness it doesn't sound like you guys were willing to you were forced to <laughs> yeah but but your ability to overcome that apprehension for sure yes what other things have you learned through the fellows program oh goodness um you graduate in two days right yeah yeah i graduate on saturday and okay. thursday so so somebody says you know what's the fellows program and what did you learn from it what do you say well I always lead off with if someone's asking me about the fellows program and they want to know what they're going to take away from it, I straight up just tell them I can't tell them that mm -hmm. because I don't think any fellows um, experience has been the same. True. That is a fact. Yeah. So that's really great because you do a good job at meeting people where they are and making their own, um, their own strides on an individual level. Yeah. Um, I definitely – have been able to express my opinion a little better than I was able to beforehand and explain my thought process in a way that everyone else can understand. Mm -hmm. So that's, um, that's really valuable. That's probably the most valuable thing. Besides that, um, public speaking was a big one. I just beforehand, not really comfortable talking in front of people or I try to mask my anxiety by being super yeah. energetic and i guess that kind of worked to a point but um it landed you third place in the econ game it did yeah. it did but uh it wasn't me okay it was it was definitely a mask gotcha um i feel way more comfortable about being myself in front mm -hmm. of a large or on stage if you will or in yeah. front of a large group of people uh i feel way better about my ability or capability i would say in expressing my opinion to larger groups of people. I want to talk about something that you and I both, because like you, I started off as a chemical engineer major. Mm -hmm. I bombed a couple of semesters and my GPA tanked. Yeah. You had the same situation. I did. Tell me, and I've had the opportunity to work with you. And I always tell every time I do a recommendation or a reference letter for you, I say, uh, James, I would hire James if I were hiring for a position because you're dependable, reliable, um, honest. Uh, to a fault. To a fault. But, but <laughs> honest. And, and that's exactly – I know that if I have a problem uh, on a project, mm -hmm. I could bring it to you and we'll think about it and problem solve, and then you're off and, and running. But – your GPA, if somebody were to just look at your GPA, they would not be able to see all of that. No, no. How has, tell me the, your feelings around the opportunities that have been taken away from you, I guess, because of the GPA. Okay. Um, so, like I mentioned earlier, I wasn't able to get any in internships besides the Hale Econ Fellows and then working mm -hmm. with CIAD at the Center for Economic Analysis and Development with Janet, which has been great. Yes. But another shout out to yeah. Janet Hare. Would be Janet. Yeah. <laughs> but I had no opportunities or I let me rephrase that. It wasn't I had no opportunities. I wasn't given the chance to interview. Yeah. Which is really frustrating. This is my perspective on it. I was being judged on my willingness to step away from something I didn't like. Yeah. And my realization of that and action following that, mm -hmm. leaving environmental science, had 
a negative impact yeah when it should have had a positive impact yeah so i think that i was looked over for a lot of things mm -hmm. which really frustrates me to this day but it's just the way it is yeah and when you get that enough it gets really discouraging yeah and as i've gone in this job search as i exit my bachelor's degree or whatever um I uh, I think I've got turned down from at least five jobs. Just strictly based on the GPA. Just strictly based on the GPA. Yeah. And I've been told that. So uh, Otherwise that, qualified for the job. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, and I've, I've even thought about like applying to things that I'm overqualified for, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. That's a pride thing, which yeah. pride will be my downfall. But, you know. Yeah, that's a whole other topic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's really impacted my job search as mm -hmm. I'm exiting exiting my undergraduate career, and it was to the point where one company I won't name names. Yes, thank you. But uh, I went to a connection event, like a hiring mm -hmm. meetup, whatever, with all their departments. Yeah, hit it off with their director, their manager, and the uh, director of their loss prevention, mm -hmm. and. We had a great conversation. I sent him a message on LinkedIn to the manager. I was like, hey, I really enjoyed talking to you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, just the normal stuff, like catching up with people. Yeah. And he sent me a message directly back like five minutes later. He's like, hey, I've already asked for your resume from yeah. HR. Make sure you send it over. Mm -hmm. And that, um, that was great and everything. And I said, let me know if you need anything else. Mm -hmm. And he goes, actually... What's your GPA? Because they had a fill in the blank for GPA and it was required and mm -hmm. they wanted my cumulative. Yeah. My cumulative, I'm fine sharing this, but it's a okay. 2.5. Okay. And they don't hire below a 3.5 mm -hmm. cumulative. Um, and so you wrote a recommendation letter and we talked to mm -hmm. this individual about that. And he's like, yeah, I will try. He took it to their uh, early careers manager. Yeah. And, uh, he said it was a great uh, recommendation letter, but GPA is a non-starter. Yeah. So even though he told me we want to hire you and work with you, yeah, he was not allowed to go to the next even day. give me an interview. Wow. Because of my GPA. So so I share a similar background. I was a semester away from being kicked out of college, mm -hmm. um, and and the issue that I have here is. And, and this is my opinion, and if anybody's on the other side wants to talk about this, I would love to have you on this show to talk about it. But we have all these companies that say we want diverse candidates with diverse experiences that have overcome challenges. Yep. This is a great example of somebody that has overcome a challenge and has a story, a successful story. Mm -hmm. And it is not being perceived as that. So to me, it's a lot of hot air. Yep. And it's frustrating because by all other measures, you are a successful candidate. Oh, I appreciate that. Right? And your GPA should not be um, a, a restriction, uh, but it is, unfortunately, to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, so this is me vouching for you. I know you're going through some interview opportunities right now, some good prospects, and I hope that they do work out. But if they don't, anybody watching this and you're looking to hire James, I highly recommend him to you. Um, with that said, James, is there any, uh, we've got one minute left, any parting words, any advice for me as I move on to advising the next fellows? I don't know. I think being present is the most valuable thing you can do for your fellows. Okay. So make time, make sure I'm available to them. Yeah. All right. Well, James, it's been a pleasure mm -hmm. being your uh, professor, your boss as a fellow and um, mentor. I, I'm going to give myself that. Uh, uh, that's that good. Title. You you've okay. earned it. So right. <laughs> I'm excited for us to celebrate on Saturday. If you are watching this, um, by the time you see this, James has graduated. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you.